In this guide on how to adjust related posts using macros and query parameters, I'll be showing you how we can get a little more creative with querying and filtering our content and fine tuning what is displayed on any given page on your site. Now, while this is really only going to be able to scratch the surface of what you can do with this powerful feature in Jet Engine, it should help shed some light on how useful this set of tools is. And with a little creativity, you can easily create some truly unique websites. But before we take a look at this in action, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Paul C from WP Tuts, and I've teamed up with Crockleblock to bring you a series of tutorials on their dynamic tools, tools like Jet Engine and Jet Smart Filters. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's take a look at what we're going to be working on in this particular tutorial. Let's kick this off with a fairly typical example of using these macros. You can see we're back on the test site that I've set up over the last couple of tutorials. And if we scroll down, we've got a list of different kinds of properties, apartments, hotels, you know, those kinds of things. If we go and take a look at one of these properties, we'll go in and take a look at the information. So you can see all the normal info you'd expect, including images. But what I've also got is a section down the side called similar properties. And what this is doing is it's sub filtering the database based upon the criteria, the category that we're using. So apartment in this example, and then showing other apartments and excluding the current apartment. So if we come back out of this and go and take a look at something, for example, like hotel, we'll click and take a look at that. This is Edinburgh Heights. If we scroll down, you can see Edinburgh Heights is not included in there. And now because we're looking at a hotel as opposed to an apartment, you can see on the right hand side, we have related hotels. So like I say, a really simple example, but the kind of thing that you're probably going to want to do to allow people to carry on browsing through the various different sections of parts of your site, it could be businesses, could be jobs, all manner of different things. Now, when it comes to working with things like this, Jet Engine has absolute ton of really useful features, but there is one slight problem. They're quite complex to get your head around to start off with. So hopefully by the time you've come to the end of this video, I'll have first of all piqued your interest in what they are, but also opened up some ideas of how you can use them. There's also a section on the Jet Engine website, which is all about the macros. Unfortunately, at this point of time, at the point of recording this, it doesn't include all of the options because there are tons of options but does have a lot of the most common options available. And we're gonna take a look at a couple of these throughout this tutorial. So let's take a look at how we would set something like this up. Quickly going to show you how I've configured things, and then we'll take a look at how we can integrate things together. If we come into Jet Engine, first of all, let's take a look at our post types. If we open that up, I've got a properties post type and we open up the properties. You can see it looks very similar to what you're probably going to expect from working with Jet Engine in any kind of circumstance. We've got a couple of custom fields, agent, facilities, address, and so on. We've also got a couple of taxonomies set up and associated with this custom post type. So let's open up our taxonomies. And in there, we've got country, property type, and property location. For this first example, we want the property type to be the basis for our sub filter. And if we open that up, you can see there are no meta fields. It is literally just a single simple taxonomy that allows us to choose what type of post it is. And if we come and take a look at the properties and come into property type, you can see I currently have apartment, hotel and self catering. OK, now we're ready to take a look at how we would build this out. First thing we need to do is create the basic listing ready to then insert that into our template and filter this. To do that, we're gonna come over into Jet Engine one more time, we're gonna to go to our listing section, and from there, we're gonna create a new listing. So we'll add new, posts is perfectly fine. Then we'll just choose properties, which are a custom post type. Gonna give this a name, and we're just gonna call this related property listing. Listing view, we're gonna be using Elementor for ease of use, and we'll create our new listing. Now, if you're unsure what a listing is when it comes to Jet Engine, it's basically just the template for each one of these individual items. So under the similar properties section, we've got the featured image, we've got the name of the actual building or property itself, and then the taxonomy, which in this example is the property type. 
we've created one simple listing template and that then just gets used to repeat the number of items inside this particular section. Another example, if we come back out to the original index section, each one of these individual entries for an individual property is basically using a listing template that we've created. So once you understand that, it's pretty easy to get your head around how listings work. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is come back out and we need to create that. So we're all in the listing section. I'm not going to get really creative with this. This is going to be a really simple, straightforward way of working. We're going to come down to the bottom section and inside there you can see we have listing elements and this is specific to the Jet Engine plugin. We're going to drag and drop in the dynamic image, which is going to be in this example, the featured image or post thumbnail as it's called inside Jet Engine. We don't want the full size image because obviously that's going to be way too big. So we're going to drop that down to something like probably thumbnail would work. But we'll go for medium just to make sure we get a nicer quality image. Now, when you're looking at this, you can see we get a smaller version and we're kind of trying to design something that may be smaller on the page, but we're currently seeing it sort of full page, which isn't necessarily the best way, best way of working. If we come down to the settings section and open that up, you can see we have an option called listing settings. Expand that, we can choose a couple of different things. The listing source, which is posts, and then from post type properties, which is perfectly fine in this example. But what I'm interested in is the preview width. We can adjust that. So let's just say, for example, we're working with a screen size of, say, 1200 pixels wide, and we then want to have three columns. We could set each one of these to somewhere in the region of 380. That simply means then that we're working more to scale with the layer that we're actually going to end up with these listings inside. It doesn't make any effect to the end result of the listing. This is just for previewing purposes. So we'll set this to somewhere around 380. Next up, we want to put the name of the property itself in. So what we're going to do is come back to our widgets and from there, we're simply going to type in dynamic and we're going to grab this dynamic field. So we'll drag and drop that underneath our image and that pulls in the title for this particular example post. You can change that source to anything you want. We've got options on the left hand side, but in this example, it's exactly what we want. Now, the last thing we want to put in is the taxonomy that we're going to be using to kind of group these together. Now you don't need to put this in there because at the end of the day, this is just a visual way of, of sort of displaying what the end result is, but it just makes it very really useful, especially for testing. If you want to take it off afterwards, you could do just that. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back over to our widgets and we're going to do a search for post info, going to drag and drop that underneath our title. And you can see that pulls in a range of different pieces of information. We're going to get rid of everything bar the first option and we're going to change the first option from author i'm going to come into there we're going to choose choose terms and then we're going to choose a taxonomy of property type and that will then list all the property types that we have associated with any particular property we can adjust the styling on this so i'm going to quickly come over to the icon or sorry to the text i should say adjust the indent a little on there like so and if we wanted to we can change the text size and all those kinds of things i'm not going to worry about that this is more a case of how do we do it as opposed to how can we make it look pretty okay so that is the first part done we've created that listing so we can publish this to save it and we've done the first bit so we're going to come back out of this now we're going to exit out to our dashboard and from there we're going to come back into the template section and down into theme builder and from Theme Builder, what we're looking for now is the default property single, which is the template to display the single property information. We'll edit that with Elementor so we can open that up, ready to start changing things and adding things. And if we scroll down the page, you can see I've got a section on the right hand side ready now for my similar properties entry. What we need to do is just pull in that listing. So we're going to just do a search for listing. And there's our listing grid, which is, again, another one of those jet engine plugin widgets. So we're going to drag and drop that underneath. And you can see that tells us there's nothing to display because we haven't set any queries, any parameters. So currently it doesn't know what to do. We're going to cheat a little right now just to make sure this looks good. We're going to come up to this section above. We're going to right click and we're going to say copy. Come back down to our listing widget and we're going to right click and say paste style. And there's our styling pretty much done. So now we know everything is visually in keeping. OK, so let's come over to the left hand side and take a look at the options we have that are part of these kind of macros, these queries, these filters and how we can really get stuck in and, you know, 
really control the dynamic functions we have on any individual section of our site. General, as its name would suggest, is all the general things you have to control how things are going to look. So we're gonna quickly change a few things on here. The first thing we need to say is, what listing are we going to use as the template for this similar properties block? We'll expand that, and what we want to choose is the one we just created, which is the related property listing. We'll select that, and you can see that now just pulls in six examples using that template, and it looks terrible. That's because we still need to change a few things on here. We don't want three columns. We're going to set this to be one column. We're going to just specify we only want to have two posts in this example, but obviously you can set that to a different value. You could randomize this if you wanted to. So if you had a lot of different posts, you could say, well, I want to put a random selection inside here. And for this kind of thing, where you may have lots and lots of different related properties, probably be a good idea to do it. Okay, so the rest of the things on there are all to do with just making sure everything looks good. We're going to leave everything as it is, but we're going to come down now and take a look at these next three blocks. We've got post query, terms queries, and user queries. It all depends on what you're trying to achieve to which one of these you would use. If you're trying to query something to do with posts, you'd use the post option. If it's a terms-based query, you use the terms query, and then you have the users query if you want to query things there to do with users. For this example, let's open up the posts query. Inside there, we have what looks like a very simplistic set of options. And it is, but underneath that simplicity, there is an absolute bucket load of power. We're not limited to just one query. We can stack queries and we can control how they interact with each other. So let's take a look at adding our first query in. We'll add an item and you can see this says the first option we have is what type of query is this actually going to be? We'll expand that and you can see we can choose between post and author parameters, orders and offset, tax queries and so on. Lots of really useful options. For this example, we're going to choose the post and author parameters. When we do that, that now op opens up a set of different options to allow us to configure this particular query. Now, what we want to do is for this example, we want to exclude the first option, which is going to be in this example, the post we're looking at currently. You can see we're looking at industry way and then we've got similar properties industry way doesn't make any sense. What we can do is we can include posts by ID and we can exclude posts by ID. Now you may think you're limited to only just putting in post ID numbers. As you can see examples 12, 24 and 33. And certainly you can do just that. You can even dynamically assign different values by using the dynamic tags option. But what we want are these macros I've just been talking about. So we come back, you can see we've got these macros, all these different kinds of macros that do lots of different things. They're kind of like short code macros, specific to Jet Engine, but they are super powerful. So let's come back over into the page we're working with, and we're gonna say exclude posts by IDs. But what we're gonna do is we want to choose the current post we're looking at because this is a template. So we're gonna drop in the little code that we have there. Now you'll notice with all of these macros, they always start and end with the percentage sign. So what we're doing is saying, exclude the posts by IDs, and we're gonna just say to exclude the current post ID. So that's the first part done. That means now you can see on the right-hand side, we no longer see this industry way. So if we take that back out, you'll see industry way comes back and we no longer take that particular entry out. So let's put that back in. That's the first part done. So we're going to close that down and we're going to say we want to add another item in. So we're going to add another item. So this is our second query. This one is going to be a taxonomy query. So we're going to open up the type again and we're going to choose tax query. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just choose to make sure that we only see the ones to do with the current property type. As you can see, we're just looking at apartments and hotels. So that doesn't make any sense in this example. So taxonomy query or tax query is fine. The taxonomy we want to use to so expand that and this will now display any of the taxonomies, both normal default WordPress taxonomies like categories and tags, but also the custom taxonomies that we've created. So for our example, we want the property type. We're gonna choose that option and now we need to have some way of filtering it. Again, we're gonna use one of these little macros. So coming down to the terms section, we're gonna click inside there and we're gonna drop in our macro. So it says, again, opening up and closing with the percentage sign. 
It says current underscore terms. So this is going to use the current terms associated with this post we're looking at and then only display the relevant property type. Hope that makes sense. So we've now created that similar property section on the right hand side. We've told it not to display the current post. We've also set it to only display the currently selected property type. What else can we do? Well, let's just say we didn't want to list them in alphabetical order. We want to list them and sort them by some other order. Well, we can do just that. We can add a third query in, and this time we can choose something like an order and offset. So this is not so much a query, but more of a filter. So what we're saying now is that we can offset the posts by any value that we want. So if we had loads inside here, we could offset this by any number. Zero basically says no offset whatsoever. We've also got the order and how we want to order them. So you've got the normal ascending and descending option when it comes to the order, but we've got lots of different order type options. You can see there are absolutely tons inside there. We'll keep this really super simple though. Let's just say we want to just choose the name as an option and you can see that now puts luxury poolside apartments first because it's set to be descending, but we can change that to ascending if we want to and then we'll flip those the opposite way. So by stacking these different kinds of queries on top of each other, we can create much more complex queries and filters and offsets and all manner of really cool, useful things. We can also control how they work as well. Now you can see meta query relation is set to and. So what that says is that query one and query two and query three, for example, all have to be met, but you can change those if you want to. You can change those to all. So in other words, instead of all of the parameters have to be met, you can say one parameter or another parameter or another parameter just have to be met before something will happen with regards to this query. Again, I hope that makes sense. And I would always advise to start experimenting with this kind of thing, you know, really get stuck in to get a good understanding because no matter how good a tutorial you can put together, you're never going to cover every eventuality. And only once you kind of start to understand how these tools work, will you start to really harness the power of them and get more the most out of them. You can also do the same thing then with the tax relation. And again, you can see you've got the and or. So really powerful, but hopefully what you can see is not necessarily as daunting as you may have first thought. Now, before we wrap this up, let me just do one more thing. At the moment, we're just looking at similar properties grouped together by their type of property. What if you wanted to do it by a type of property and in the same location? So for example, we're in Edinburgh for this example, we may only want to see inside the same type of property in the same location as this particular property. Well, we can do just that. When we create this taxonomy query to query the property type, what we can do is for brevity, we can just duplicate that. We now have two versions of the same thing. Open up the second option, and the only thing we would need to change inside here is the taxonomy. Because we're using the current terms, the little macro for that, that doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the source of the information. For example, we don't want property type in this second case, we want property location. And click on that, and you see no data was found because there's only one property of that particular type. But that's limiting it in this example to just the same city. I've also got country set up. If you remember back to the beginning of the video, we had country as one of the taxonomies. So what we could do is just change this to country. And once that updates, you see we now have one extra apartment in the same type and also in the same location. So this is a great way of building up and stacking these to create way more advanced, way more unique, way more comprehensive filters and queries to then display content on your page. But hopefully what this has done is this whet your appetite for just some of the things that you can do. And what I would recommend is taking a look at the macro guide over on the Jet Engine documentation. That's going to give you an idea of just some of the things you can do. And hopefully it won't be too much longer before they expand upon the macros that are listed here with some of the new ones that we have available. And as Jet Engine grows, all the more functionality comes to it, the more powerful it is, and just the more things we can do to get creative with this tool. So my hope is that once you've seen some of the fundamentals of working with macros and queries in Jet Engine, that you'll be able to see just how powerful they can be. And being able to stack various different queries on top of each other, you can easily create very comprehensive websites without any form of complex coding. And if you have any questions, 
please feel free to drop those in the comment section below. And all the applicable links for everything covered in this tutorial are in the description. My name is Paul C and until next time, take care.